My brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary, and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, uh, the Office of Readings offers us a segment of St. Bernardine of Siena as he reflects upon the place and position of Joseph in God's plan. There's a general rule concerning all special graces granted to any human being. Whenever the divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation, God adorns the person chosen with all the gifts of the Spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand. This general rule is especially verified in the case of St. Joseph, the foster father of our Lord and the husband of the queen of our world, enthroned above the angels. He was chosen by the Eternal Father as the trustworthy guardian and protector of his greatest treasures, namely his divine son and Mary, Joseph's wife. He carried out this vocation with complete fidelity until at last God called him, saying, Good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. What then is Joseph's position in the whole Church of Christ? Is he not a man chosen and set apart? Through him, and yes, under him, Christ was fittingly and honorably introduced into the world. Holy Church in its entirety is indebted to the Virgin Mother because through her it was judged worthy to receive Christ. But after her, we undoubtedly owe special gratitude and reverence to St. Joseph. In him, the Old Testament finds its fitting close. He brought the noble line of patriarchs and prophets to its promised fulfillment. What the divine goodness had offered as a promise to them, he held in his arms. Obviously, Christ does not now deny to Joseph that intimacy, reverence, and very high honor which he gave him on earth as a son to his father. Rather, we must say that in heaven Christ completes and perfects all that he gave at Nazareth. Now we can see how the last summoning words of the Lord appropriately apply to St. Joseph. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In fact, although the joy of eternal happiness enters into the soul of a man, The Lord preferred to say to Joseph, enter into joy. His intention was that the words should have a hidden spiritual meaning for us. They convey not only that this holy man possesses an inward joy, but also that it surrounds him and engulfs him like an infinite abyss. Remember us, St. Joseph, and plead for us to your foster child. Ask your most holy bride, the Virgin Mary, to look kindly upon us since she is the mother of him who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns eternally. Amen.